So, hi everybody. This is Dean DiDurco. I'm a curator at the Contemporary Art Museum in Houston. And really pleased to be here today for an interview with our Cam Connect series with the artist Benny Maris. Hi, Benny. Hi, Dean. Hi, Dean. So, you're in Vermont right now. Um, you normally are based in New York. Um, but I think some folks who are familiar with Kim's programming could remember the series of works that we exhibited in our Outside the Lines exhibition um, back in 2013, 2014, which were a group of, of sculptural paintings called Totems. Can you yes. describe those works for us? Yeah. Uh, they were small paintings on wood panels uh, that I'd been working on in my studio in New York. And as I would come up here to the forest, I would uh, collect fallen trees and logs and stumps. And I brought those back to my studio and kind of made bodies for my paintings and displayed the paintings on top of, like, Gave, painted these logs and treated them and kind of harmonized them with the paintings in the studio and then combined them to make pairs. So that they essentially gave the paintings a body to, to stand on top of. Excellent. And I remember, um, and we'll have some images also that we'll include here of the installation that you did, um, but they also kind of reminded me of forests. Um, they have a, a kind of very natural connection. Both of those things, I think that that kind of connection to the natural world and also this idea of giving painting a body are two things that are, are really important to you and, and to your work. And I think maybe a, a great place for us to start is a series called Another Another. So mm. A-N, the word other and another. Um, that you started in 2012 and you're continuing to the present. Um, interestingly, I think they're, a, they're a, a body of work that combines painting and photography. Could you tell us a little bit about, about what those are? Yeah, yeah, and they, 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 do, they do dovetail nicely in a way with the totems as they're a kind of another way to think through painting and abstraction with my body. Uh, you know, the totem started sort of with giving a painting a body and suggesting the possibility to gesture and to be animated and to um, express in three dimension, three dimensional space. And so the another and other paintings uh, were, uh, a further attempt to be able to do that in the forest, uh, to, to make a painting on my arm, um, on plain air, you know, be, go, I take my paint with me, walk into the forest, just kind of observe what's happening with the atmosphere and the vegetation and the color and the, the kind of uh, distances of, to the horizons and closeness of, of rocks and vegetation or water and to make a painting that might uh, be ex exciting and dynamic to work with in that landscape, and then to spend a few hours walking around with it on my arm and finding different ways to um, imitate the landscape, to move with it, to harmonize with it. And, and uh, I captured that with a, with a camera. So that it, it ultimately became a photograph but it's very much a, a painting and it's very performative while it's, as it's evolving. And so you started them, I think you were back in a, in a residency at the BAMP Center that Jan Verwart organized. Yes. And I think probably <laughs> one of the things that, um, I know you've, you've always been a kind of outdoor person. Um, you're a surfer, hiker, um, skier, all of that. Um, but I wonder um, if you can talk a little bit about how being in a, a, such a beautiful landscape like Banff um, kind of kicked that project off for you. Uh, yeah, it was, a, it's a breathtaking scene in Banff. The, the high alpine 
the lush forest, roaring rivers, incredible uh, diversity in the terrain, depending on kind of what part of the region you're going to and what time of the year you're going to it. Uh, so it was a particularly dynamic uh, landscape to respond to as far as paintings were concerned. And then to be there with this amazing group of artists and uh, thinkers who were, all, and we were all in dialogue about the role of nature for contemporary artists. You know, what is it? Where is it? How can we respond to it? Um, how can we even pretend to kind of make art in the in the vastness and grandeur of it? And so it was a really special place to get started. So I think one of the things that's particularly interesting about the series, and now that it's been in going on for over five years, you've mm -hmm. been able to shoot in a variety of seasons. You've even recently done some shoots kind of where you're underwater. Um, but ultimately what you're doing is, is kind of finding a way to create a painting that's already on your body, like you're saying, you're, you're painting your arm, and then kind of going out and, you know, positioning it in the landscape um, to connect. Sometimes it looks like um, you're, you're kind of making lines that resemble the landscape, sometimes extending them, um, oftentimes playing, like you said, with the horizon. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about um, some of the some of the ways in which that kind of connection you're making those kind of connections to to nature um, and kind of negotiating it through your body. Yeah, uh, there's a ex a, a kind of really interesting dynamic that's developed between uh, working indoors and outdoors in my, in my painting practice. And one of the things that the Another Another painting has helped me to uh, uh, get a, a physical understanding for is the feeling of catching, a cat, like the, re literally the gesture of catching something. Uh -huh. In the studio, it's very much a, manner, a matter of kind of catching an idea or uh, catching a thought or a memory and being able to work with it. And when, it's, when I'm outdoors, the experience of catching is a lot more uh, about positioning myself in a relationship to, to the landscape. Sure. Uh, almost a little more like catching a, a groove, like when you're catching a groove when you're dancing or catching a wave, a matter of being in the right position at the right time uh, and being ready to, um, you know, in the, ca in the case of the another and others, it's push the, you know, aperture and snap, snap the photo to catch that painting. Where, when I'm more painting indoors, you know, the feeling of catching the idea is, is more in my, in my mind rather than embodied. Uh-huh. I think so, it, is, it is that moment. It's about a kind of very, very much about being present. Because yes. you can see in the images the kind of celebration of mm. the landscape and of your relationship to it because of the way that you're ordering the images, um, you know, kind of connecting yourself um, into that landscape, almost like fitting yourself in sometimes like a puzzle um, mm. sometimes, but always celebrating what, what's going on that you're finding and how mm. that relates back to your body. Yes, it's a, it's a very ecstatic and joyful kind of painting to be making and uh, has really, uh, it has kind of served a great mnemonic kind of boost in my life. I, I sort of, I, I, my memory has become sharper and more lush of all these places that I've made the work because I'm, I find myself looking a little closer and, and kind of measuring myself wherever I go to see kind of what sort of relationship m my own body and my visual kind of field of vision and my perception 
offers in all these different kinds of landscape. Sure. That's mm -hmm. excellent. And so right now you've, you've actually made a few um, as, you've been, as you've been kind of sheltering up in Vermont. Yes. It's been a, it's a really beautiful time of year here in the forest where it's really kind of just waking up from a winter slumber. You know, the ferns and the moss and the lichen are all starting to pop and everything's melting and the beavers are very busy <laughs> down the road. Yeah. And yeah, it's kind of springing back to life and it's been uh, particularly grounding and peaceful to be here and in the forest while the, while the world is struggling with the pandemic right now. It's excellent. It's almost like a, a bit like a, a reprieve from kind of city life right now. Um, because yeah. you know, being based in New York, it's a, it's a pretty intense situation there for, for many of our friends who are there right now. Yeah, it really, it really is. And I uh, feel particularly connected to, the, to my friends and community in the city despite being far away from it. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a great privilege to be here in the forest. Uh, and also a place where I can, uh, I'm trying to find ways to show my solidarity and compassion with what's, what's happening in the city right now. It's really a What's struggle. happening in the city and also I kind of imagine in a way this kind of connection to the natural world. A kind of, you know, a deeper, a deeper respect for, for what's going on in our environment. Um, yes. But to kind of get back to a little bit what we were talking about, the, the other body of work, and it's, it's really nice that you bring up these issues of scale and of the way that the measure of the body kind of comes into the work. Um, sorry, there's a truck driving past that may be a bit loud right now. Uh, no worries. Um, but in thinking about the... Uh, this kind of idea of the measure of your body um, and in a in a very different way a, a certain kind of more interior practice um, there's also a series that you began in 2016 um, called the Vitruvian contractor bags <laughs> yes uh, these are our paintings that you're making on opened up um, black plastic contractor bags um, yeah the the kinds that you know you see people throwing leaves in or or other kinds of trash um, yeah and, and painting on them and using your body as a kind of both a, a painting and printmaking tool in a way um, can you talk yeah. a little bit about the series yeah uh, they began uh, in the studio I try not to waste any paint whatsoever. So over the years I've had uh, just rags and different techniques for not letting any palette, uh, like, you know, knives stay on palettes or my knives or my spatulas or brushes, you know, there's gotta be something to catch everything. And at some point, um, you know, plastic, just some plastic waste around the studio was the thing that I reached to. And the, the kind of versatility of the plastic, its toughness, its durability, and its ability to fold and squish and manipulate paint started to become really intriguing. And with, this, with these black contractor bags, I started to notice that the paint was really sticking very, very well to them, which was kind of surprising because you know, plastic's not a support you're typically supposed to paint on. So I followed my nose and started to learn a little bit, a bit more about the garbage bags and the chemistry of the paint. And it, it uh, has really blossomed. And these have become these really amazing, durable supports to think about in the studio. They're, you know, it's, it's a, I love that it's a barrier of a sort. You know, the, it's, it, in the, its function in the world is to be a barrier between, you know, the the dirt and the trash it provides a place for things to rot in peace and uh not leach directly into the soil at least for a moment's 
time. And uh, it's uh, it, it, coincidentally opening up this specific size of, this is one hanging behind me here. It's a 56 gallon uh, contractor bag. And when you cut it open on its seams, it just happened to open to my perfect Vitruvian dimensions. You know, when I outstretch myself as wide and as long as I can, I, I fit, it's literally one to one. So it, uh, it, became, it helped me to imagine my body as the print, printing press. And for this uh, bed or you know, barrier to kind of uh, allow any way my body can move and compress and roll and wiggle to uh, allow for uh, the painting to, to happen. I like this idea too of, of this, it becomes a measure of the body in a different way. I think the other day I kind of brought up the idea of, of um, the snow angel and it's <laughs> yes. kind of similarity to the, the Vitruvian figure. Um, very, very much. <laughs> but you're not only kind of laying on top of the plastic and kind of making shapes like that. You're also doing things where you're really engaging your body to kind of fold fold the the plastic over on itself so you're making things that are sometimes symmetrically printed or yes. exploring different kinds of axes yeah it has a a kind of origami yoga uh quality to it physically where i can imitate axes on my body of folding sideways and twisting and and rolling you know there's uh, I, I, when I, as soon as when I started to feel the work, I started to think about uh, the David Hammond's body prints and Kelty Ferris's body prints, and the way that the body, their bodies, leave a trace in in their work. And I was finding um, that the traces that I was leaving by doing it this way, with the kind of the folding the origami and the kind of imagining myself as the printing press would uh, accumulate the paint in a really different way that didn't necessarily like the trace of the body is more in the Vitruvian dimension of, uh -huh. of the bag uh, in the bag. So while you don't necessarily see my body uh, just kind of built into the scale of the work is uh, a one-to-one -one correspondence with how I would fold and bend and, yeah. And, uh, well, what interests me is it's it's relation to kind of abstraction, because you know sometimes we'll we'll think about abstraction in relation to representation, something that looks like something else. Um, mm -hmm. but here, it's a, a the level on which the abstraction functions is perhaps more a gestural or performative level which is a, a very interesting thing. I think it's, it's pretty clear um, seeing the, the Vitruvian contractor bags in person, mm -hmm. they're really inscribed with the body. We often see these kind of axes where there are symmetries, where the idea of what the swing of an arm would be or what your reach is, those kinds of things are, are embedded in that work. And it, I think, makes it really exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's very exciting for me. I, I, uh, I often imagine the way that the, the accretion in these paintings and the accumulation of folds and bends and gestures and scratches and swipes are something like geological forces, kind of uh, how, like, you know, how, making us i'm trying to make a stone <laughs> yeah well and it is you're you're doing the same thing where it's like layers of accretion like layers of time are in there as well as the actual physical layers of the paint kind of one over the other i think it's, yeah. it's that aspect of the the gesture that's in it that somehow implicitly engages the the notion of time that's in the work. And I think it, it makes for a very kind of interesting relation um, to the, 
the Another Another series, um, because while Another Another is a very kind of exterior form of abstraction, um, there's a, a much more kind of interior and intimate form of abstraction that's going on in the Vitruvian contractor bags. Mm. I, I feel that too. I feel that too. Where, where uh, a little, you know, that feeling of catching the painting outside is something really different than the kind of intimacy I feel with these. They're um, less caught and more um, just kind of being caught into the, caught in a flow, caught in a dynamic, messy flow. We're creative. Where, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, and the, the, the time factor, you know, the, uh, the act of catching outdoors has a kind of um, finesse to it. You know, you don't, it's not always caught. <laughs> like it, it, so much slips away or is missed or is just a little bit, a little bit off. In, or light in, changes or something happens. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where, where here, you know, we've, we've, uh, <laughs> you know, there is something about being like a four, a 4D printer where <laughs> that may, that has maybe been hacked with. So, you know, this hacker kind of inserts some kind of wild code into a 4D printer and just sets the thing in motion. I and do it, like it, the idea of you as a 4D printer. I think that's <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's uh, the kind of uh, mentality that I'm I'm taking when I when I start these Vitruvian contractor bags. Fantastic. Well, Benny, it's really good to catch up. So, for folks who are interested, maybe to kind of um, learn more about your work, can they catch up with you on on places like Instagram? Yes, uh, I do use Instagram. My name is Benny Maris on there, and I am tuning up a new website. So keep your eyes peeled. BennyMaris.com will be up and running shortly. Fantastic. Really excited yeah. to, to be able to connect with you up in Vermont and talk a little bit about what you're working there. And I cannot wait to see these new paintings in person. Cool. Thank you, Dean. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you yeah. so much for calling today. Okay. We'll see you soon. All right. Be well. Bye. Bye.